Alright, so I'm going to show you guys this. The reason this is so bad is because that's a beam. So that wall, this wall right here should be load bearing. So we may have to structurally support that. When I say may, I mean most likely. So it's probably no time for another update on the house. You can see the dumpster came. Uh, it's pretty full. We put all the stuff like the uh, dressers and the piano and things like that in there. It all got broken up. My cousins uh, came and helped and they basically just smashed it all uh, and loaded the dumpster for me, which is actually a huge help. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and give you guys a couple updates on what's been going on. So this floor right here, uh, this is the porch. Uh, it is still leaking. The roof gets done this week, um, but you can actually see up there. Yeah, it's, it's not looking so great. Um, you know, I don't know if I pointed this out last time that the rafter is actually uh, freestanding right there. It's not connected to anything. Um, so we went ahead and resupported this floor. So originally what I was going to do was actually uh, just lay down OSB over this whole floor uh, and then just just paint it like uh, with, a, with a nice floor paint. Um, but my uncle had a good idea um, to just go ahead and resupport the beams. Um, There's a lot done there actually. You probably can't really see what's going on in there. Um, basically, and I honestly, I didn't really help out at all with this. I maybe made a few cuts, but that was pretty much it. Um, just resupported this whole floor. Uh, this whole beam was rotted out. Same with this one. Um, and then we're just uh, ripping two by fours to just, uh, well, apparently that one's not screwed in, uh, to just make new flooring here. And then I'll paint the whole thing. And I think that that'll actually end up looking okay. Uh, Time-wise, it didn't take super long. And cost-wise, it's, it, it's going to end up being uh, fairly cheap. It was just, you know, a little bit of lumber. Um, so we actually went ahead and just replaced the frame on the door, um, put the actual frame that's supposed to be there. And now the door, you don't have to like close it shut with your shoulders. So that's nice. So here we are inside. Let me turn this, oops, let me turn this light on right here. So that beam that you saw earlier in the video, we actually went ahead and replaced it. And that's why um, my family actually came up to help because I don't really know a ton about structural things. Um, but this actually ended up taking only about an hour and a half, which was a huge blessing. It's just two two by sixes and with a, a piece of uh, seven sixteenths OSB yeah, in between there. Um, and it ended up being uh, just about 80, 88 inches uh, right on the dot. So uh, we actually were able to put it right on the uh, existing um, supports that were there. And thankfully, when this wall came down, uh, we didn't have to build a... Um, a support wall. So typically you'd build like a support wall so that the load doesn't, or the ceiling doesn't drop when you uh, take the beam off of it. Uh, it's because you want something supporting the load. But with how this is, it's actually uh, part of the load supported by this other roof here. Cause this is the, this is coming down into the valley. Uh, this is the valley right here uh, on the roof that you can see from the outside because you know, this is, this is that, that real high ceiling over there. So this actually went in super well, uh, super sturdy and, you know, cost, let's see, each of these uh, two by sixes were $10 and then um, just some nails. And we did a, a sister or joist on that, uh, uh, that two by four right there. So it only ended up costing less than $50. So that was super nice. Um, and this is just the rest of the house right now. Like I said, my family came in and we like just went ahead and demoed everything. Uh, because the dumpster was here and honestly they probably put me like two weeks ahead i did not realize how much work that was going to end up being so in this room if you'll remember there was a wall here uh, and just a doorway here uh, that was the that's obviously hanging electrical um so this law this wall was not load bearing so we went ahead and just took it out and then also oh i forgot to mention probably one of the the biggest things about the room is we took the built-ins out Go ahead and throw up a, an image right there of what they looked like before. So I think that that's uh, gonna really, uh, really make the room look good. Um, just because this is the kind of the view 
go over to this side. This is the view uh, between the kitchen and this dining room area. So now this wall, uh, we've got to leave in because the range is going to be, there's a cabinet and a range there. And then this wall right here, uh, all the way across is actually load bearing. So we'd have to go ahead and beam that. If we were going to flip the house, that's probably what we'd end up doing. But since this is going to become a rental, this is how it's going to sit. So basically we'll just patch this drywall um, and then finish up in the kitchen in here. So, and I don't know if I've really been sharing my plans with this. Um, I went ahead and painted the cabinets uh, Swiss coffee white. I got to do a couple of touch-ups. Um, as well as those are probably going to be going. I just don't know what I'm going to do with the swans yet. I know I actually kind of like them. I think they kind of look cool, but I understand that like it's really not something you want in your kitchen. Um, yeah, so these are painted white, and I think they look a lot better than they did before. Um, we took this other, um, there was like a an eight inch little thing here. It wasn't a cabinet, it was just like a spacer because they had a 27 inch range here, um, but I had to take that out so we can get a 30 inch range um, so there'll just be one cabinet here with some countertop. We're going to build the concrete countertops and then, um, just do a tile, uh, a subway tile all the way up, all the way over. And then as well as over here where the range is going to go, we'll just do subway tile, all this and I'll do all the way down. So it's behind the, behind the range as well. So I think it's looking pretty good. You know, here's that view where that wall and built-in used to be. So it really does open up the kitchen, you know, and honestly it does look a little bit smaller here because the fridge is kind of pushed it in the middle of the room, but um, you know, that's, that's, that's a renovation for you. Uh, the bathroom, there's really, um, there's really no update. I did decide, uh, to keep this toilet cause it's actually fine. I just got a, uh, <coughs> toilet seat lid for it. Um, you know, but honestly, like when it comes to something like this, a decision to keep the toilet as opposed to rip it out and put in a new one, like this is going to be a rental and that toilet seat lid was $10. Like I said, the toilet's fine. And, you know, it's like, if I rip it out, then I've got to replace it so, and I've got to pay for a new one. So it's a lot of time and a lot of labor, or I can just do that. So there's between like $200 for a new toilet or just a $10 toilet seat. So obviously went with the toilet seat there. Um, took out these two sconces there, added one up here. It's going to be one single light fixture over the vanity because the vanity is going to sit right here and added in a switch because uh, there wasn't a... A switch for either of these, they're both the twisties. It's actually this exact light where you actually just uh, twist it on and twist it off. Um, but I thought it'd be nice to have a, a, a switch in there. And in this, you know, I've always said that I'm going to reglaze this tile. As of right now, I'm still like questioning that because I think it'd be really cool to reglaze it, but it's going to be a lot of work to like get all this fixed and then put new tile up. That's not a ton of work. It's more like getting it fixed and ready for them to reglaze it. Or I could just pop up a vinyl surround. So that's still like in the decision process, but the floor looks good. It cleaned up well. Well, now it's dirty again. Um, but still with the wains coating around the side there. Um, this room didn't really get any update. The wire came down off the window there. I thought that looks good. I'm prepping for paint right there. So I'm just gonna spray the whole thing. So that's why I'm taping off right there. Uh, this room, this bedroom, I don't, it looks the same. I don't, I don't think anything got done to it. I think, I think that one was pretty much ready to go. Um, so we'll go ahead and look, oh, here, this is that front. I've never really got to show this, um, like front official front door entrance way. Cause it's, it didn't have a bulb in there. There was always like stuff in there. Um, but I actually, uh, just use this as like my storage, my part storage room now. And I really love this door. I think that's a really cool feature right there. Um, Fireplace looks the same, Didn't, you know, still leaving it. I went ahead and painted this black. I don't know if you guys saw this before, uh, but it was like a gold color. Just painted it black. There's no, there's no point in replacing it if it's not broken. Just paint it and give it a new fresh look there. Oh, the carpet came up. Um, I know this is kind of a, a big thing to miss right there. So the carpet came up. These stairs are fine. The ones down at the bottom here, there's a little bit of an issue. Same with this post here. Uh, for the stairs, you know, it's, it's wiggling right now because it's not, a, it's not attached up here, but I'll probably just cut it and cap it because it's not rotted all the way down. And you know, it's like one of those things, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So I'm just going to fix what's bad on it. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it'll be fine from there. So these are the hardwoods. These are the original hardwoods from the house that got pulled up and it looks amazing. You know, it saved a couple thousand dollars worth of flooring and a lot of labor. 
they're in really good condition. Like as you can see, like I'm pretty sure the camera's picking out how good this is. So I went ahead, I've been working real hard before they came, I wanted to make sure to have uh, the upstairs spray. Now keep in mind, this is just like, I did a primer coat, the wall color, the ceiling color, and the trim color all in one day. So it was a lot of spraying, a lot of time. So definitely need some touch-ups. Like right there, you can see you need touch-ups, touch-ups. Um, we need some touch-ups on the ceiling up there. But, so we decided to go with edge comb gray for this because it was a nice cross between a gray and a beige. I'm trying to, trying to get some good lighting. The electrical is disconnected up here. But this is the master bedroom. Again, it did have the carpet. Um, I patched the ceiling up here, so instead of actually replacing the ceiling, like I thought I was going to have to, I just went ahead and screwed a whole bunch of screws in there and just patched it with some drywall mud and then painted over it. And I really don't think you can tell at all. Well, I mean, I can tell a couple spots, but I also know what I'm looking for. I don't think on camera you can tell that there was any ever an issue there and that the, the ceiling was like severely sagging. So you'll have to let me know what you guys think of the color. It, it's kind of like a bayish, beige, gray, uh, it, it's very light. I thought it really uh, was going to work well with the house. I think it would work well if we decided to, um, you know, go with a more uh, modern gray theme or, you know, kind of try to fit the style of the house and maybe not go too, too modern. But just look at how good these, these doors look like a fresh coat of paint. Um, it, you know, this, I think this looks great. Um, you know, overall, like I said, my aunt went ahead and touched this up. Um, because I had the same issues like I did in the other room. Just really, you know, uh, it was a quick spray. And honestly, this is the first time I've ever painted inside a house. I've only ever painted like outside. So um, it was definitely a learning experience for me. And I definitely can't spray th four different colors all in the same day. And this is the upstairs bathroom. We went ahead and gutted it. I'd had the vanity there and the toilet there. Um, it started to get primed here. Um, and then I sprayed it with the ceiling paint and so I'll just continue to patch this and then I'll probably spray this, um, you know, in a day or two. So um, that's, a, that's a lot of the update. And I wanted to show you something that's actually really, really cool if you're doing your own fixtures and something to look for is that this is maintenance paint. It's literally just white paint. But where this lies is that this is $32. And it's literally just flat ceiling paint. They claim it as maintenance paint, but on, right on the thing it says it's for like ceilings and um, you know anything like that, anything you use flat paint on. So for something like ceilings and closets, like it doesn't make sense to spend $120, $130 on a five gallon pail of like Bare Premium Plus when you can buy this maintenance paint for literally $30. I, I, I bought it at Lowe's um, with my Lowe's credit card. So I think I ended up being like, 29 or 28 dollars or something like that before tax so this is definitely something to look out for you know because that that pail right there was i think 120 or 130 um, for the eggshell enamel there that's the that's the wall color pail um, and then another thing to look at is that this is i actually went with an oil-based primer in the upstairs um just uh, i don't know why i was just giving it a try it was it was high hiding um i used oil-based on the uh, cabinets downstairs. There'll be a video coming out about that eventually. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. It really doesn't spray that well. I really like how the sprayer sprays the latex paint better. So that's probably going to be the last uh, five gallon pail of the original Kills that I use. I think I'm going to switch to the um, Kills 2. I think it is here. It's right down here. I'll, I'll go grab it. But it's, it's like the Kills 2 is cheaper. All right, I'll show you this one. This is actually just an old two gallon that I had. But the, the Kills 2 is cheaper. This latex based one is cheaper. It's only, I think, 60 some dollars uh, for a five gallon pail or 65, where the original Kills, the original oil based one is like 75 or something like that. So, you know, if I don't really like how it sprays out of the spray gun, it like, I just can't, I just can't get the settings right. I don't know if I'm using the wrong tip whatever it is, but I don't want to buy a new tip. I could just spray latex paint and then just get like literally this perfect finish. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just switch over to the Kill latex based primer and just hopefully it holds well with this paint um, because it does say you can use the latex paint over an oil based paint. And I went ahead, um, you know, just because this 
paint is so old that I was like, oh, I'll throw some oil-based over it to make sure we don't have any issues. Um, you know, oil-based primer than latex-based paint. Um, but uh, it says you can use the latex-based primer over the oil paint. So we're gonna see how that goes. And just the fact that it sprays so much better, I think it's gonna be worth it. Oh, and it's a little bit cheaper, uh, which, is, which is pretty nice, actually. If you like this video, it'd be great if you hit the like button. That'd really help me out for the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you wanna follow along with this project, this, this rental property house project that I'm doing right now, it'd be cool if you hit that subscribe button to follow along. I'll be continuing to post more videos. But anyways, I'll catch you later.